Hey, what's going on? The guy with the long hair is back. Today I got some pretty cool photography ideas you can try at home. And we are gonna use this strange looking setup. This is not a macro lens. Everything I'm gonna show you today, every image is not taken with a macro lens. I'm gonna replace my 90 millimeter, whoa, <laughs> macro lens and the pretty amazing Lara Probe lens against a kit lens and my telezoom lens. How's this gonna work? The answer is I'm gonna use the Nisi close-up lens which can be mounted to almost every lens and this will transform your lens into a macro lens. I'm not sure if you've noticed the last image from the intro. That was a colorful soap bubble through a water droplet. If you want to know how I took this image, keep watching. So basically I'm going to show you a couple of very creative photography ideas without the need of any macro lens and I'm going to show you how to boost the amount of light because that's very important because we need to close down the aperture a lot. And just to get an impression what is actually possible with a white life telephoto lens, I took this image of a dandelion clock. Maybe you have seen one of my other videos where I took images of the dandelion clock with a very, very sharp 90 millimeter back lens. And I was able to get the same image with the tele zoom lens, which is not the sharpest. What is pretty incredible using an adapter like this is that you can get a magnification of 1.5 to 1. So almost even a little bit more magnification than with the 90 millimeter macro lens. But this also leads to some problems because when we're shooting at 300 millimeter, the field of depth is very, very small. I have some sample footage here using apertures between 5.6 and f18 even f22 so when we close down the aperture of course we get a larger field of depth which is very important for macro photography but at the same time it is very hard to shoot at those aperture numbers because when we want to use a low iso number we have to really use a lot of light i've taken another example with a hornet which is in my freezer for about two or three years and this is a very good example because when we want to get very close, I'm very interested in how the compound eye looks. And my goal always is to get the complete compound eye sharp so that the field of depth is at least the size of the compound eye. And when we have a look on the image I took at f5.6, it's actually almost impossible to figure out where the, uh, the focus plane is. And what really surprised me is that even at an aperture of f22, the quality is super, super good. Okay, when we want to use a setup like this, we need a lot of light. And therefore, I got two very cool hacks or tricks for you because we need to boost the amount of light and we have to focus, concentrate the amount of light. Therefore, I'm going to use a flash diffuser. This is basically a sheet of plastic. Then I have glued white paper to it and this reflector shield here. This is very important because the light coming from the flash cannot disappear to the top. So all the light coming from the flash will be focused on the diffuser and the amount of light going to your subject will be much bigger. Okay, now we're gonna focus on the photography ideas, I promise. My first idea was to use a pine cone and create some kind of colorful abstract background with water droplets. But somehow the water droplets just disappeared all the time. Yeah, I've tried different setups, for example, with my Venus flytrap, but the surface was very, very plain and the water droplets yeah, just vanished and I had to go out and find a branch which was really dry and very rough and then um, the results got much better. To place the water droplet, I would recommend to use a needle. Okay, now we got three droplets which look pretty boring. So I changed the setup again a little bit and added this. 
yeah, now you just have to go out and buy the most expensive big flower you can find and place it behind the water droplet. Or you'd use your smartphone, Google an image of a flower and place your smartphone behind the water droplet. Yeah, that's a pretty crazy hack, I know. I wanted to improve the image. That's why I added some water droplets to the end, to the flower part of the branch. And surprisingly, luckily, the shape of the water droplet was pretty spherical, which I really like. Yeah, then I just added a background with my smartphone and that's the image, pretty nice. Then I've added a couple of more water droplets and maybe you've noticed that the first droplet is bigger because I did some Photoshop post-production. No, you just can add water and more water with the needle if you think, yeah, the, the result could be a little bit better. Just give it a try, it works pretty good. Yeah, just get creative, use your favorite images, put it on your smartphone, use it as a background and you get some pretty creative images. I thought, yeah, maybe you can create a look as if you would look through the water droplet into the sky where this bird flies around, which is obviously fake, but I think it looks pretty interesting. Yeah, this one is also from one of my latest videos where I did some experiments with a lens ball and light painting. If you wanna know how to create this image, I'm gonna put a link for you into the description. Okay, then I thought maybe it's time to change the setup again. And normally when I wanted to get creative, I go to my fridge. Yeah, I could not find any interesting stuff that day. So I just uh, took an egg and placed some water droplets again with a needle and tried to get some more like abstract photos. I have used an RGB light. Whoa. Um, to add some colorful background. This is pretty cool because you can change the color by a click. Um, this is only 20 euros. When you get a setup or an image which looks boring, just add colorful light and yeah, at the end you will be more satisfied. I must say that I really liked the photography with the water droplet and the smartphone in the back. Yeah, and at the end I must say I was pretty surprised how well this Neasy macro adapter worked. It comes with some um, step up rings so that you can mount it to almost every lens. And I'm gonna say that, yeah, I did not expect to get so good macro images because when I'm comparing the images I took just today of the water droplets with old images I took with a very, very, very sharp macro lens, I hardly can see any differences. So if you don't have a macro lens, Maybe that's an option to start with macro photography. I hope you like this kind of photography and that I could give you a little bit of inspiration. Please let me know if you're gonna try this water droplet photography or maybe if you like to build a flash diffuser like this because yeah, it's very, very simple. And if it breaks or gets dirty, just exchange the white paper and you're good. So, thanks for watching. Have a good day. Stay healthy and hopefully see you in the next video.